Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Welcome back, and as always, thanks for tuning back in. So uh, we're going to be looking at a few things today. Uh, we're uh, we're going to be running another Reddit Force Academy, not this week, but next week, because uh, this week uh, the, RW, uh, the RWCS is organizing a group of tournaments. So a lot of fun is going to be going on there, but uh, as soon as everybody's done with that, we're going to get everybody uh, to regroup and, and just run a couple of um, academies to get, a, to get f people focused on updated base designs, um, some air attacks because we're really weak in air attacks right now and then uh, of course advanced tactics and strategies centered around the the AQ walks so stay tuned for some of that uh, should should be getting some interesting replays and some uh, some analysis on uh, just updated attacks updated styles uh, and updated strategies but uh, for what we're going to be talking about in this um, in this episode, if if you haven't already, go back and take a look at uh, some of the most recent videos. Um, this was a composition that I picked up off a of Twitch stream. It's just a, a golem and valk, a golem giant and valk attack based around uh, a five healer AQ walk and then some earthquakes to punch into the core. And again, this is something that I've been using pretty much exclusively on on my run up into I'm um, I'm now sitting comfortably in champs too. I think in all of the attacks I've only ever lost one and it was just, you know, one of those weird bases where uh, you know, I thought one thing would happen and 50 other things happened and you know, just it just didn't work out. Um but uh, we're not going to be just looking at my attacks, we're going to be looking at some of the other folks, some of the other members' uh, attacks using the strategy as well. We have one lower Town Hall 10 that actually used this exact same strategy, but to hit a Town Hall 11. So we're, those are the uh, the attacks that we're going to be looking at today. Now it is a lower Town Hall 11, but I mean he's a lower Town Hall 10, so uh, I, I feel like at least from, um, uh, at least from a <clears throat> difficulty standpoint, it's... Um, you know, pretty pretty well matched. Now he does come in with uh, five healers, and again the 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 point with these attacks is to put the AQ on at least one of the air defenses as quickly as possible. If that means using wall breakers to open up that outer wall to get her access to them, while simultaneously keeping her away from the infernos as long as possible, that's ideal. And there's a number of things that you're going to have to process along the way. You know, what happens if you encounter one too many point defenses? Uh, what happened? What are you going to do to take care of the CC? Things like that. But this is a, you know, again, a lower base with what are the equivalent of uh, Town Hall 8 defenses, but he still has that Eagle artillery to deal with. And that's one of the things that just makes these uh, these initial AQ walk breaches, uh, you know, at least into the outer core, into the outer ring rings so deadly because you can put them on you can put her on top of one of those air defenses and then if you're really lucky you can put her on top of the eagle artillery so that you can see there five um five healers one golem the eagle artillery still has not started up which is just fantastic but once um once that eagle artillery goes down he can start the rest of his attack now one of the things that I did want to mention about the um, the way that this attack runs, there are obviously a lot of different variations of this. You can go with two golems, you can go with one golem and more giants. Um, but the the interesting thing that that I you know that that I've been seeing with these attacks is, uh, yes, you can use jumps for this. But one of the really cool things that happens when you use uh, when you use earthquakes is that it damages a lot of the buildings around uh, around the walls. So if you pick a high value spot to enter, you know, to breach into the core, something that has you know not a lot of storages but lots of defenses, for instance, this is perfect. This is a perfect application of that strategy. And uh, you know, in this case, it's it's really just about getting that breach into the core, getting your heroes on top of those infernos, and then um, you know, banking a lot of percentage on on the way in. Uh, I mean, again, it was a lower town hall. It was a you know town hall eleven with effectively town hall eight defenses, but the um, the strategy was the same. And if he had picked just a slightly different angle, he probably could have three starred this base uh, with this attack because um, you know, and again, maybe just a few more hero levels, he could have he could have taken out that that inferno and then. Uh, <clears throat> you know, gone on for for three stars there, but you know, again, a great application of the strategy, uh, picking picking your strategic objectives, you know, making sure that you put that AQ on top of the air defense as quickly as possible, and then breaching into the core someplace where the AQ is gonna is going to uh, to meet up with them. Now, the next attack we're going to look at, uh, this was actually these were actually two attacks in uh, in our most recent clan war. So let's take a look here. Um, now I I was matched up against the Town Hall 11, unfortunately. So for for all of my efforts to max out my heroes, now I, I get the uh, <laughs> now I have the fun of having to take on Town Hall 11s. So again, open box base, uh, you know, just a 
derivative of the nemesis base. Um, these air defenses, while buried one layer in, are still absolutely accessible from the exterior, and I'm going to take advantage of that uh, uh, with, with with my walk. So <clears throat> again, it's the exact same composition. You know, this is literally my farming composition, and then I use this to attack uh, this base. But the the idea now, the, the strategic planning behind this really came down to finding the most direct path into not the town hall but into the Eagle Artillery, because nothing happens with these TH-10 versus TH-11 raids unless you can take out that Eagle Artillery. It's just, it's, I know that they say, you know, I, I know a lot of YouTubers have been saying that, uh, you know, it's it's not really all that well uh, high-powered. I, I haven't been finding that. You know, I've run seven Golem raids against these in regular matchmaking, and I have, I've been absolutely destroyed. So, now, just a, just a quick pause here to, to point out one the reason that I picked this particular corner to come in, that's you know one defense, bunch of walls, another build, uh, the uh, the CC, another defense, and then of course the Eagle Artillery. Now dropping four quakes there damages all of those down to just about half uh, you know half life, which is fantastic, because once I do get some defense led troops and some Valks into that core, they're absolutely going to shred through you know what what was essentially four thousand hit points is now only two thousand hit points. Of little uh, you know very really really good job of uh, using the earthquakes at least in that corner. Now one of the other things that you have to account for is when you're up against the Eagle Artillery is split up your troops. If you get everything into a nice neat bunch for everything, you know, for the uh, for the Eagle Artillery to take out, you're gonna run into a world of problems. Uh, now for this raid I did bring two rages, I did bring one freeze, and that freeze was just to pause that artillery from, from taking off. And you know, I was able to, I believe, delete one attack round from the Eagle Artillery, which kept all of my damage alive for the for the uh, for the run into the core. And that's really where you know that's the magic behind this attack is you have the the uh, the giants to soak up Inferno beams, and you have the Valks to do all of their damage. Uh, that one freeze in this particular case was just to pause the Eagle Artillery, give my troops a break, uh, you know, so that they could punch into the core. But as, you know, from a pathing perspective, you don't have to worry about the the giants being distracted because you have a mix of giant, both defense-led troops as well as you know attack everything troops uh, via the uh, the the Valks, and they're able to go through you know Gangbuster and um, breach into the core. So yes, a, a jump could have worked, but you know, one of the things, and at least in particular for this base, is that in addition to taking out the walls. I was able to uh, to soften up the defense, the the defenses, and in particular that eagle artillery. So a really great application of that strategy, um, or at least a, a great you know great application of those those spells to make sure that uh, you know take um, I, that I could go in and actually damage the other uh, core for just that much more. So all right, so the uh, last attack we're going to look at this was <clears throat> this was my hit again on number four. So the um, the plan for this was to get the AQ along with her five healers walking down in this direction. Now th there's some question as to whether or not you needed a uh, four or five. I, I use five just because that's what I'm used to. But since these are lower defenses, you probably probably could have gotten away with a four. Uh, but that was to take out all of these buildings, at least that air defense, and then hopefully by the time she gets to about here, uh, that's where you start in with your golems, and then um, this uh, this is the coring team. They're responsible for taking out that other air defense so that uh, the AQ is clear to walk into the core and then help uh, help out with some of the, the gutting, gutting work that has to happen in the core. Uh, the way that that's going to get accomplished is one jump right there, two wall breakers right there, another jump to connect these compartments here to take out their, that air defense, and then whatever's left over hopefully goes into cleanup mode. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, actually, there was one, the, the one thing that you do have to watch for is the uh, this inferno here, uh, so that's where you know you, you save that, that freeze. Uh, there'll be at least one rage for the Archer Queen, and that's for, you know, to take out that ar enemy Archer Queen, because she does come in range for her if you check the trigger ranges. And then at least one more rage for the core, along with a freeze for that Inferno right there, just to buy you just a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and watch, oops. So let's go and watch that all go down. Now, you know, the, again, the interesting thing about these attacks is that uh, you start off banking quite a lot of percentage before you even attack it, you know, any, <clears throat> before you even start the main attack of your, uh, main attack of the base. 
or the main phase of your attack rather. So at least in her case, she'll go in and bank about 20% of this uh, this base before ever starting the um, the main attack phase there. Now I did drop a couple of uh, funneling wizards there, plus one extra wizard just to take out that that air, that uh, archer tower. Uh, you know, just just for, it was optional, but I figured you know one of the things that I hate is when uh, point defenses get free damage on you, especially if there's nothing protecting that that point defense. So even if it's just bringing along an extra hog or dropping in a wizard or whatever, uh, you know, make sure that um, none of the point defenses are getting free damage on you, especially when they're undefended. So once um, once I do get in, in range of that enemy Archer Queen, I will drop, was it a Rage? or Okay, I popped her ability to take her out, and then uh, you can start the rest of the uh, the raid. Now, one of the unfortunate things is that uh, I didn't anticipate that she would run in there so quickly, and, and unfortunately the um, the healers did come in under, under some uh, air defense fire, so I, th I think I did lose one of them, which was unfortunate. And then with the rages, they're going to get sucked into the core and then into range of the other air defenses. But once you get everything into the core, you know, drop that rage, you've got your Valks, you've got your Giants. Uh, and one of the really nice things about the Valks is that they will uh, chase down all of those enemy skeletons that would normally hold up the Barbarian King and, uh, and take them out in one swipe. There was... Um, I don't know if you caught that in one of the earlier replays, but you know there was a mass of skeletons, and then a second later they were all gone, which was just phenomenal. And then you know once that core is gutted, it's it's just about the remaining troops uh, going in and into cleanup mode. Now, unfortunately, I did run out of time, and uh, and troops here. And you know the thing about this attack is there there's there really the the only place where precision comes in is. Uh, trying to work with the AQ and, and making sure that you're keeping her out of Inferno range until you're ready to take out the Infernos. But, uh, you know, banking that percentage and then um, going into cleanup mode, hopefully once you have all, all of the Infernos down. A lot of times with this composition, you'll just end, end up three-starring the base just as a, a matter of course because, you know, you've gutted everything else and you still have your healers up, which is one of the nice things... Um, that happens when when you apply this strategy to the right base. So, you know, again, something to think about. Uh, you know, I do feel like this is almost starting to become like a one-trick pony, or I'm starting to become a one-trick pony. But the uh, I've had a lot of success with this uh, with this composition against a wide range of bases, provided that you can put the, uh, the the Archer Queen on top of at least one of the air defenses, take the other air defense down, and then you know have a plan to take out the Inferno somewhere along the way. So, hope you hope you thought that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the box below and. Uh, See you on the next video.